This is WKYT This Morning. Good Monday morning. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. I'm Bill Bryant. Certainly had wonderful weather yesterday. Yes, and there's a summer feel in the air again here on this Monday, May 23rd. Good to have you with us. Now at 6 o'clock, what we've uncovered about a murdered Lexington mother as her accused boyfriend prepares to make his first court appearance. The latest on a Texas crash that killed four members of a Lexington family. And taking the fight against drug addiction to the ring, how some professional boxers are getting in on the action. Boy, things look good again for today. I don't see any problems whatsoever as you're taking off early this morning. It's a bit on the cool side. We're at 48 degrees now in London Corbin area, and that goes for Lexington here, the Bluegrass Airport. By the afternoon, jump that about 30 degrees. 77, a great day. This isn't even close to the warmest temperature I have in my seven day. I'm going to show you extremely warm conditions coming up in just a few minutes. All right, and here's the latest now from WKYT News. A Lexington mother of three was shot and killed. For the first time since the murder, her boyfriend is going to be facing a judge today. WKYT's Mark Barber is tracking the case from our live desk, and he joins us with the details we now have. Mark? Good morning, Bill. This morning we have been searching through these court documents that we picked up at the courthouse. In the papers, we found new information about William Pomeroy's charges. According to the court documents, the 45-year-old hid and removed evidence from investigators after he killed his girlfriend Friday morning. Pomeroy was charged with tampering with physical evidence and murder when he turned himself in that night. Police say they found the body of his 43-year-old girlfriend in the backyard of their home on Pinckney Drive. Amy Kogel had been shot to death. She was the mother of Pomeroy's children. She was also the leader of two Girl Scout troops. While it is still unclear why she was killed, police have labeled her death as an act of domestic violence. In seven hours, Pomeroy will answer to his charges of murder and tampering with physical evidence. I'll stand before a judge for the first time in the case at 1 o'clock this afternoon. From the live desk, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. In Madison County, a man's murder trial is set to begin today in Richmond. Ryan Denholm is charged in the 2011 shooting death of Zach Flower in Berea. Denholm's brother, Matthew, is already facing a life sentence for his role in Flower's death and for the murders of a Richmond couple. A fifth suspect in a Lexington teenager's murder will be arraigned today. Jordan Jackson faces charges in connection with the October death of 18-year-old DeMichael Bolton. State police say he was shot outside an Anderson County business during a Kentucky State University homecoming after party. Kendall and Kenneth Barry, William Edwards, and Antoine James were also charged with Bolton's murder. State police say they're still looking for a sixth suspect. WKYT is making some calls this morning out of our newsroom to our stations out in Texas. This morning we're trying to find out how three Lexington family members are doing after a deadly crash involving other family members. Police say the Avalar family's van was rear-ended and pushed into the path of a semi. Israel Avalar and his three sons, Kevin, Daniel, and Matthew, all died. Avalar's wife, Hilda, his daughter, Kimberly, and his mother, Sarah, are still in the hospital. The family attended Clay Mill Road Baptist Church here in Lexington, where Pastor Jeff Fugit says the family's other daughter, who did not go on the trip, is now in Texas. And that uh, church coming together trying to uh, support to that family. Well, today, four Kentucky officers who died in the line of duty will be added to the Kentucky Law Enforcement Memorial in Richmond. WKYT's Mike Byer is live on the EKU campus with details on today's ceremony. Mike? Good morning, Michelle. I'm on the campus of Eastern Kentucky University, and the Kentucky Law Enforcement Memorial is lit up in blue as it normally is. This morning, nine more names of Kentucky officers killed in the line of duty will be added to this memorial, bringing the total of 534 names. Now, of those four, four of those nine officers were lost last year alone. Those names to be added are Richmond Police Officer Daniel Ellis, Nicholasville Police Officer Burke Rhodes, and Kentucky State Troopers Joseph Ponder and Eric Christman. Additionally, the ceremony will recognize five Kentucky officers killed in the line of duty between 1893 and 2013, but whose names were not added to the National Memorial until recently. Those names to be added this morning are Georgetown Police Officer George James, Harrodsburg Police Officer John Russell, Hazard Police Officers Rory Drawn and Alfred Holland, and Kentucky State Trooper Blake Trivy. Now, Governor Matt Bevin will deliver the keynote address this morning at the memorial, a memorial that is Kentucky's only statewide monument dedicated to fallen law enforcement. Enforcement officers. Now, the ceremony is scheduled to start at 11 right here at the Kentucky Department of Criminal Justice Training. Live in Richmond, Mike Byer, WKYT.
Thank you, Mike. Firefighters are still trying to figure out what caused a fire that destroyed a Lexington home. They say a neighbor on Camperdown Court off Lane Allen Road was the first to see smoke and called 911. Everyone inside the home got out safely. UK police are investigating an arson. They say someone broke into Reynolds Warehouse No. 1 Saturday night and set furniture on fire. No one was hurt, and crews say there was no major damage to the building. For the first time in about two decades, prescriptions for opiates in the United States are declining. Prescriptions for painkillers have skyrocketed since 1996 when OxyContin hit the market. But a new study shows doctors are starting to heed the warnings about the highly addictive nature of the drugs. Still, the drop in prescriptions is not leading to fewer deaths from opioids. The study shows fatal overdoses continue to rise, claiming more than 28,000 lives in 2014. In southern Kentucky, the fight against the growing drug problem is getting thrown into the boxing ring. They're going to be having a big event there, professional boxing coming to Corbin. Retired professional boxer Nate Tubbs and his brother Tony say the charity boxing event is the first of four. It's part of their Lives Matter Put Down the Drugs and Pick Up the Gloves boxing series. And a portion of the proceeds from each event will go to Operation Unite, a nonprofit that fights drug addiction in Kentucky. They get people off drugs, get them uh, into rehabs, get them into uh, basically getting their lives back functional in the right direction. And the fight card has not yet been set, but the event is scheduled for June 25th at the Corbin Arena, and the tickets will go on sale for that next week. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. The sun's starting to rise, and you're seeing a beautiful start to the day. Pink skies out and about. Take a picture of this, send it to me on Twitter, on Facebook. I'd love to show them off for you, but yeah, really nice start to the day. Now, here's the deal yesterday, 90% of us stayed dry. That means 10% of us actually saw a couple of showers, a couple of rumbles of thunder. That was far, far eastern Kentucky. You get back toward the border of West Virginia, at least close to it, and Kentucky, and you were talking about a pop up shower thunderstorm. And that's what we had yesterday. So, that area over there, if you did see rain, this morning, more than likely, you're going to have fog out and about. But for the most part, it's going to be clear skies. 40s and 50s this morning, which is a bit of a cool start. But add 30 degrees to that, and we're actually at 77 later on this afternoon. That's pretty much where we finished off uh, yesterday. And also a lot of sunshine. It's going to be the same day as yesterday as most of us, or virtually all of us, actually stay dry. 77 degrees. We go off into 8 p.m., 71. Walk around the neighborhood's perfect for that. Grilling out, I'd say go after that. A little hot dog, a little hamburger. It's perfect. Absolutely. We go off into the night and into tomorrow morning, and we're at 54 degrees. So no big change overnight into tomorrow. Huge dome of higher pressure. What that means is whenever I tell you to look at the H, you see the H on the screen, uh, typically uh, that means dry conditions, and typically that means much warmer conditions too. Now there's a front back toward our west that's going to be closing in on us as we get towards your Tuesday and Wednesday. A couple of rumbles are expected Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. A couple of rumbles. This is no washout, but this front doesn't really move through anytime soon. It actually just kind of stalls out over there. So what that does for us that brings in that warm air. We'll get 80s in here. 77 today is by far the coolest, if you will, temperature that we're going to be seeing and feeling the next several days. 80s all the way throughout Tuesday through Sunday and off into Memorial Day, too. So a quiet pattern in store. Next 48 hours, I see no problems. The front gets a little bit closer. There will be five, maybe even six consecutive days of severe weather for the plains. And that's where that front's located. It stretches back toward that region. It's really not going to move that much, meaning we're going to stay mainly dry and we're also going to be very warm. Like I said, 80s. Great news. It's not record breaking. Records are typically in the lower 90s this time of year, but still, you're talking about 80s. It's great Most news. And when you see your emoji cast, I like that. Yeah, it looks All good. Happy I'll faces with sunglasses, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> it's coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, Micah. <laughs> Each morning, we're bringing weather and traffic together. Here's Officer Don with a look at what's happening out there on the roads this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, no wrecks, and we're okay on the circle and the interstate. Just had a look around the city. Inner and outer loops are doing fine, and no problems on Man of War. Check things around the Hamburg area. We're good to go past Sir Barton over to Richmond Road. Let's get a look outside, and we'll show you what's happening as far as uh, traffic flow this morning. As you can see, inbound, everything pretty much a straight shot toward Lexington from Nicholasville. Versailles looks good, even from Winchester on 64. Drive times this morning, no problems to report, so we're okay from Nicholasville. Looks like it's about a normal hop there. If 
if you're coming in from Clark County on the interstate, 64 is going to take about 25 minutes. And from Richmond, I-75, about 31. Now back to you in the studio. All right. Sounds good, Don. We thank you very much. The forecast sounded good. And it's Lucky Penny Day. Yes. So, so pick up any pennies yeah, you find. You see a penny today, <laughs> maybe you'll have some good luck. Good to have you with us. 610 is the time as we do have Monday off and rolling. A lot more news on the way on WKYT this morning. President Obama is in Vietnam this morning. What he says he won't be doing during this trip in three minutes. Can search teams find Flight 804's black boxes before time runs out? I'm Jonathan Viglietti in Crete. I'll have the story coming up. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT this morning. And this day off to a nice start already. We already have some uh, early sunshine out yes, there. Yes, a beautiful day ahead. <laughs> Hence of the daybreak anyway. 614 right now, and the search is intensifying in the Mediterranean for more wreckage from Egypt Air Flight 804. Yeah, the plane traveling from Paris to Cairo crashed into the sea last week, killing all 66 people on board. Jonathan Vigilotti has the latest. An Egyptian submarine is now on the way to scour the seabed north of Alexandria, Egypt, looking for the data and voice recorders belonging to Egypt Air Flight 804. The U.S. Navy is using its P-3 Orion surveillance aircraft to help with the search. We can stay out here for a good six hours looking for people. We have a lot of windows throughout the aircraft. Everybody's looking out windows. Egypt Air 804, contact Padua. This newly released audio recording captured a standard check-in between Flight 804's pilot and air traffic control over Zurich, Switzerland. Thank you so much. Good day. Uh, good night. Two and a half hours later, the aircraft began veering erratically before plummeting into the ocean. Teams here in Greece have been assisting in the search. The black boxes they're looking for emit pings for up to 30 days. Data published by Av Herald, an aviation industry website, claims smoke was detected on board minutes before the plane went down. Aviation experts say that alone could rule out the possibility of pilot error. There is no human error that would have triggered uh, smoke alarms. Airline officials say it could take weeks to identify human remains that have been collected, adding to the grief of relatives still searching for answers. Jonathan Vigliotti, CBS News, Crete. The president of Egypt says it will take time to establish what caused the crash, but a terror attack has not been ruled out. So far, no terrorist organization has claimed responsibility for the plane crash. The suspect in the deadly shootings of a Massachusetts police officer was killed in a police shootout. The man is identified as 34-year-old Jorge Zambrano, and authorities say he had a criminal history. A state trooper was also injured during the shootout last night. Auburn police officer Ronald Tarantino was fatal shot during a traffic stop early Sunday. And this morning, a judge is preparing to hand down his verdict in the case of a Baltimore police officer charged in the arrest and subsequent death of Freddie Gray. The judge is expected to announce a verdict in Officer Edward Nero's case today. The 30-year-old officer faces assault, misconduct in office, and reckless endangerment charges. Gray died last year, a week after his neck was broken during a ride in the back of a police van. President Obama is in Vietnam, the first stop of a week-long trip to Asia. The president will meet with key leaders in the country today as he tries to strengthen economic ties in the region. Obama is also expected to visit Hiroshima in Japan this week, but says he won't apologize for the U.S. atomic bombing of 1945. The 2016 race for the White House continues to heat up. Front runners Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump traded jabs yesterday amid new polls showing the contenders in a statistical tie in a hypothetical general election matchup. Clinton's rival Bernie Sanders widened his rift with the Democratic establishment, blasting so called superdelegates for supporting Clinton even before she had a competitor. The time this morning is 617, and German drug maker Bayer has made a $62 billion offer to buy. No problem here. There we go. The company is based in St. Louis. It has about 20,000 employees. And if the deal goes through, the German company would be the biggest supplier of farm chemicals and genetically modified seeds in the whole world. 
Well, another automaker is suspected of cheating on emissions testing. A German newspaper citing a government report says Fiat Chrysler used the illegal software to cheat on pollution tests. The Italian-American automaker says all of its vehicles now comply with emissions rules. Just in time for your Memorial Day barbecue, beef prices have dropped to the lowest level in two years. According to Bloomberg, cattle ranchers are expanding their herds and feed costs are also down. And and if you're heading to Paris this summer, not only can you visit the Eiffel Tower, you can stay in it. A rental company, Home Away, is transforming the first floor of the Eiffel Tower into a vacation home. Now, you have to enter a competition and write a short essay about what you would do if the Eiffel Tower apartment is all yours for the night. Ooh, so there you go. I'm going to start writing that essay now. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Sounds like fun, right? So WKYT this morning is just getting started. Bill, I think you're going to like this next story. Dolly Parton is bringing her new tour to Kentucky. Yeah, details on the double-digit ticket prices. That's coming up at 6.30. And we have a beautiful start to the day. It's going to be extremely warm as we get throughout your work week. Not really record-breaking, but at least we're even talking about that in a sense. I'm going to show you that coming up in just a few minutes. And welcome back into WKYT this morning, 622 on your Monday as you rise and shine. Get ready for a great day. I just stepped outside. It's beautiful out oh, there. I can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait, right? Yeah, right? So a man accused of murdering a Lexington mother of three will be making his first court appearance today. Right. That is what is trending at this hour on WKYT. William Pomeroy has uh, turned him, that's Pomeroy, turned himself into police on Friday. They say he shot his girlfriend and his, the uh, mother of his kids, 43-year-old Amy Amy Kogel. Her body was found in the backyard of their home on Pickney Drive. Nine Kentucky officers who lost their lives in the line of duty will have their names added to the Kentucky Law Enforcement Memorial in Richmond today. Now, four of those officers died just last year. Governor Matt Bevan will deliver the keynote address. A deep diving submarine from Egypt will soon be at the scene where the search continues for more wreckage from Egypt Air Flight 804. That submarine will aid in the search for the plane's black boxes. Egypt's president says mounting evidence points to a sudden and dramatic catastrophe of some sort. We say it is just an absolutely wonderful beginning of the day out there. And let's check in with Micah. Yeah, it really is. Check that sunrise down. Now, as the sun's starting to rise, Perfect conditions outside in terms of the way it looks, but I will say this, the way it feels is a little on the cool side. We're in the 40s and 50s early this morning. A slightly cool, so it's one of those mornings, it's definitely not roll your window down type of morning and turn the radio up as you head off into work. Still a little bit cool for that, but once we hit the afternoon, you're talking a 30 degree swing from morning to afternoon. Guys, here's your emoji cast and what we're going to be looking at. We're at 50 degrees. Right around that across the region. A lot of sunshine, so yeah, people are going to be happy. People will have their sun, uh, sunglasses on. You'll need it all day long as you travel off into your afternoon. And you know what? We will get some rain toward midweek and off towards your weekend. However, it's not what I'm focused in on. The heat is what I'm focused in on, guys. We're going to be talking about temperatures not just in the 80s, but well into the 80s. Do we see 90s anytime soon? I'm going to have that coming up in a few minutes. Whoa, that would be something, right? Yes, I like that emoji <laughs> cast too, man. That yeah, makes me good. happy. Lots of sunshine. <laughs> You're right. Uh, 625 right now on WKYT. And there's something very unique about the violin besides the fact, uh, this one we're going to show you anyway, that it is purple. There it is. Look at it. It was made on a 3D printer by students in Minnesota. Gina Slayton created the plastic violin as part of a physics experiment on sound waves. Now she's hopeful it could be a way to make musical education more accessible. I can't believe that stuff. A team of girls in Seattle is turning the world of Little League Baseball upside down. Meet the Peaches. They're named after a real women's team that played in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League back in the 1940s and 50s. But unlike the team of old, these girls play against the boys. And don't let the pink shoes and the gloves fool you. They prefer to let their actions on the field do all the talking. All the boys at our school think they're better at baseball than us, and I kind of feel really good when we get it better because it proves them wrong. Finally. <laughs> Finally, yes. The Peaches are part of a division that does not keep score because the players are so young. Ah, so. but wait till they do, right? Well, yeah. Go, Peaches, go. We'll see. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, stand up for the guys, right? Uh, 626 on WKYT this morning, and it's good to have you along with us. We have a lot more news coming right up. Yeah, when WKYT this morning returns, there's a new development plan for downtown Lexington. When construction could start, that's coming up at 6.30. And all of our top stories are on the way. And Tuesday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $203 million. And Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $80 million. We'll be right back on WKYT This Morning.